Hey y'all, it's Sarah again, and I am bringing you a whole new paint color today. Um, this is going to be something a little new. This is uh, a project using the Waverly Wax in Clear, and we're going to be using the Waverly Chalk Paint in Mineral. Um, I've done some really light neutral color woods. This one, um, you don't have to work as hard at to stay light colored. So... It's a real, real soft, subtle look. And I want to zoom out and let you see. Let me get the lighting turned on over here. And I want to get this one kind of out there. I really love this look. And it is kind of similar to um, the warmer grays. The warmer gray beiges. And an even as light as those look, when you're looking at them like this, you realize how much lighter and more neutral this one is. So hopefully this one won't be super long. This is one of the easiest ones to do. Um, as far as coverage goes, I'm going to go ahead and get my strips out. Uh, if you haven't caught one of the other videos, I cut mine at 3 inches by 30 inches. I just prefer that size. You can always cut them any size you want to or whatever's going to work for your project. A couple of other things that we're going to be using are a Dollar Tree chippy brush. Um, this is a Dollar Tree bath sponge that I've cut in half. I've got just a little bit of um, mostly Waverly Wax in clear. I've got a little makeup sponge and then I've got a little something to stab with. You could certainly use just the point of a leaded pencil, just something that you can poke into this with. Uh, I may or may not grab another brush in the process, but I wanted to show you just how simple this one can be. So my first step always is to distress my boards. So I'm taking my fingernail and carving in almost a parentheses, like knot hole into my boards. So something I wanted to point out is that on an average board this size, two or three knot holes is really fine. It's enough to get the idea of realism there, the more that you add, the busier it's going to look. So if you're wanting one of those really busy woods, um, then sure, you could definitely go in and add more. I, tr I typically try to stay within two or three uh, little knot holes per strip. So, once I've done that, I'm just going to take my whatever pokey tool that I've got. I'm going to bring my sponge closer to me. And I've already poured some of the Waverly in Mineral. This is the wax. And this is just where I'm going to be kind of blending it out. Now, one of the things that I want to point out to everyone is that the wax is almost a necessity. This is truly just a thin piece of paper. And if any of you have ever just painted acrylic paint or chalk paint on this, you know that this top paper layer can curl. It can, the whole thing can warp. It can peel off. It absorbs too much moisture with the regular paints. Using the wax in with our colors almost helps seal this surface a little bit in order to accept more paint products. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be mixing in with every little bit that we do. There's going to be a little bit of wax mixed into this. And I'm actually going to start with my little chippy brush. And I'm getting the tips just barely hit. I'm going to pull that over to the side. Do the same thing, tip my wax. I'm going to have a pretty even mix of wax and paint at this stage. And I'm going to go in really light 
to start because I can always get heavier with this. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you can see, I always start where the slats meet. I'm always going to want those edges to have more detail, more shading. And I'm going to keep rotating those until all of my edges are nicely covered. And I like the Dollar Tree brush out of all my brushes, including the wider ones, for this process right here. Because the bristles are not even as much quality as the Walmart or Harbor Freight ones, which is an example here. Even though this is similar, these are much softer. This is definitely much more wiry. So I get more gradient that way. So there's not much left on my brush. I'm just going to kind of brush that off over where my knot holes are. You can see it kind of drags around them. Now, when we make the lighter colors out of things like antique and wax in order to lighten those. It is very difficult to maintain those colors without going too dark, which is why I say don't push your liquid pigment material mix into the knot holes like we do with darker colors when you're doing the lighter colors. On this one, with the mineral, we'll be able to do that. So I'm going in on my ends. You can see I still have not reloaded this brush. I'm just basically hitting off uh, the bristles on that end, giving it a little more shadow, a little more definition. So you could kind of leave these boards like this if you really wanted to. However, I'm going to tell you that there is still a lot of paper exposed here. There is a major risk of that paper picking up dirt, oils, fingerprints, all of that. So to offset that and to keep this light, I'm going to go in with mostly wax. I'm going to dab a little of that off. So I'm just going in with pretty much mostly wax. Now we've laid some pigment there. It's going to blend this out. Now this is, if you've ever used um, a photo app. This is almost a blur effect. We are blurring down this white to be a little more creamy and neutral. This wax is going to help seal off that white. It's going to pull a little of our color over and blend the white into the color so this board stays really light. And the wax will help keep the dust, dirt, oils, fingerprints, those kind of things. Now, by saying that, I'm not saying that the wax is completely sealing it off and making this work like a wood product. It's not going to do that. We're still working with paper. But it does help protect the paper. And I'm still just doing wax, guys. Um, it helps protect the paper. From being quite as absorbent so with this wax I'm pushing a little of it down in these little spots there's not much pigment on here at the moment because it's just picking up what we've laid down earlier with the chippy brush so I've got that blended in it's pretty neutral you can see it still almost looks white it drug a little color into it to make it slightly creamy. And now I'm going to add a little more detail and we'll be done. So I'm going to get some more wax and I'm barely going to pick up a little pigment. I'm still wanting uh, a good wax to chalk paint ratio. 
And I'm using my two front fingers here to push down in different spots right at the front of this sponge. Now it's going to pull some softer grains in there where my brush adds the grainier grains. And you want to add a little of both of that into your pieces. But more softer muted kind of graining with your sponge and your fingers. And your brush graining. Now you can still get similar if you scrunch your sponge up. You can get similar to your brush graining after you get used to playing with it. Um, and laying down your medium. But I would suggest just switching back and forth. Because you don't want a complete blurred effect. Then it looks like somebody used a heavy filter on your wood. So you don't want to completely blur it out. You want a little bit of grainy grain and a little bit of the softer grain. And by mixing those, it definitely makes your eye think that it's seeing a lot of definition there. So I've just drugged this through. I didn't really add much pigment. I just drug it across what was on there. Now it's got a few more lines. I'm going to do the same thing on these. I'm going to add a little more, a little more to them. And I'm still barely picking up any of the paint color itself. But I do want to get into my little distressed holes and carved little spots. You can definitely leave some boards lighter, some boards slightly darker. It's not going to end up super dark just because this color mineral is not a super dark color. So I'm pretty happy with these. I'm going to zoom in real quick and let you see a little better. So I'm pretty happy with how those are and you can see what I mean about you've got a little more of the subtle graining down here. And then you've got a mix of the more striated graining. Now, on my other lighter pieces, I said that the sides were light enough to blend in. And they are. And especially if you're making the lighter color out of the, uh, the color antique, the wax color antique by Waverly. However, with this one... You can absolutely go in on this one because this color doesn't get very dark. And do your edges. And I actually recommend doing your edges on if you're going to do this color in particular versus the other light colors. Because this color really is so light that this helps give each board its own little definition. So that your edges, when you go to line them up, and the spaces in between your gaps doesn't blend quite as much. And you'll see what I mean. So once you go in and do this part and do your edges, be sure, now I didn't do this first because I want it to be able to blend in these edges and kind of darken them some. So that's why I'm doing it now at this stage. So you can see a little of my paint has seeped in there. Just kind of blend that in nice and soft. Anywhere it seeped in on my boards. Up here you can see it seeped in pretty good. I'm going to blend that nice and soft. So now those edges really set apart from each other. I'm sorry, let me scoot that out. Now those edges really set apart from each other. And the last detail, and you've seen me do this before, I'm just going to dip right in our same wax, clear wax, mineral, chalk paint mix. I'm going to blot this off a little bit, off my little makeup sponge, because you definitely don't want to go too heavy on these knot holes, since this is not a really dark color. You just kind of want to dab that in. And I like to go back in once I've dabbed that on in some spots, just kind of 
lightly, lightly, super, super lightly slide my sponge across where I dabbed it in and it kind of drags a little of what I just dabbed in. And you see there, it drags just a little bit of that shadow outside of that ring. And there you go. Um, let me get back a little closer. Let you see that. Such a beautiful color, guys. I am so excited to play with this one. Uh, I think this would... This is such a great neutral that any of your colors that you'd want to do, greens, blues, any of that, this is absolutely a wonderful color option to go with those. And I'm going to span back out and put them together with my others. So you can see how nice this all looks. And there you go. I absolutely love, love, love this color. It is so subtle. Let me adjust the lighting a little. So we're, we're, we're in a rainy day today. So my lighting is not so super and I keep having to turn more and more lamps on. So this is such a great neutral. And it's so easy to obtain. You're not putting a whole lot on here. The white's doing a lot of the work for you. You could probably wipe out this look. Probably faster than most of the others. Once you get used to um, getting that pigment on there softly. But I hope this one uh, is one that you guys find useful. I can't wait to play with this. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. But I'm so loving this color. I'm so excited. I'm trying not to squeal. You guys have no idea how hard I work to hold my excitement in when I'm doing this. And remain neutral and calm. Because this really does get me absolutely tickled like i just get giddy i don't know why it's like watching magic happen um and it's magic that i can do pretty much any craft i want to with it's pretty much unlimited i'd love to see what you guys have idea wise if you haven't checked out um the peppermint cactus group page on facebook be sure to check that out those ladies are just going above and beyond with this idea. There are some great projects. There are, there are crafters doing entire walls and headboards and just beautiful things. Be sure to come and check that out. Join the group. Get some ideas. Um, show your ideas. And I hope to talk to you guys soon. I hope you like this one. Thanks. Bye.